Sarah was barren. Sarah was not only barren, but she was also very old before she gave birth to Isaac. The only means by which Sarah could give birth is through the work of God in her life. If we seek to add to our salvation or to contribute to it in any way or seek to earn it, we are not hearing the gospel preached in the life of Sarah and Isaac and the birth of Isaac. This is something God has to do and we look to him and to him alone for it. There is no salvation outside of the sovereign, graceful purpose of God. We cannot work our way into the promise nor keep our place there. This is true for Jew and Gentile, for us, for our children, and for all those who are afar off. So the Jerusalem above that Paul refers to is not simply a future reality. It is and has been present throughout history. Abraham and Sarah were children of the promise of the Jerusalem above. There were those standing at the foot of Mount Sinai that were children of the Jerusalem above. God's means of saving his people has not changed from generation to generation. That is the heart of Paul's argument here. So you are to stand fast in this freedom. There is no justification outside of faith in Christ. You cannot work your way into the favor of God. It is only through faith in Christ. You become a descendant of Abraham and an inheritor of that promise along with Abraham. So as we are called to stand fast, as we are called to stand firm in this truth, you do so remembering that you are an Isaac, you are not an Ishmael. If you're a descendant of Abraham, you are an Isaac, not an Ishmael. You're here purely through God's grace alone and through God's work alone. You are sons and heirs. You are not slaves. You are sons and heirs. You are not under a guardian or a tutor. These are wonderful truths. But Paul says, do not give up that freedom and try to establish your own righteousness. Or if you're trying to establish your own righteousness now, give that up today and look to Christ alone. Look to him. Stand fast in that freedom and remember, remember, the human heart will always veer to self-righteousness and justification by works whenever given the opportunity. In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. And you can replace circumcision and uncircumcision with anything you like. And it would be true. We're a very active community doing lots of good things. Replace any one of those good circumcisions with any one of those good things, that statement would still be true. In Christ, Christian education or not Christian education avails nothing. You cannot justify yourself in that. Stand fast in the freedom for which Christ has led us. That is what Paul exhorts us to do this morning.